What is up everybody? Welcome back to another YouTube video. Today we're going to talk about five random facts about being an airline pilot. And I know it's been a while since we've been in uniform in front of a camera, but I'm excited to bring the aviation side of things back to the channel. If you guys enjoy random facts and stuff like this of an airline pilot, smash that thumbs up button down below. And if you haven't done so already, if you're new to the channel, welcome, hit that subscribe button, join the family on the journey to 100,000 subscribers. So the topic of this YouTube video is actually coming from a TikTok video I made just two days ago sitting right here. I sat down a couple days ago and just started randomly throwing out random TikTok videos. It seemed the five facts of an airline pilot was very well received and a lot of people were intrigued by it. Now TikTok is definitely a bizarre app and you have to get your For You page correct otherwise it'll throw a lot of random junk at you. So I know I'm pretty old, I'm 28 years old to be on TikTok. but. The algorithm there is insane. I suggest anyone that's trying to grow a brand, definitely get on TikTok. It doesn't matter your age. The reach is incredible. So fact number one was actually airline pilots here in the United States can't have beards. And it got a little bit of pushback in the comments because a lot of people outside the United States received the TikTok and they said, well, airline pilots here in uh, Australia or the UK or wherever it might have been said, oh, we, we can have beards here as long as they're clean cut. And so that that's a big thing here in the United States is the clean cut image. So for most of the United States you and most of the airlines here in the United States, you actually cannot have facial hair. Some airlines allow a mustache, but I feel like that's kind of being uh, pushed out. A lot, of, a lot of people tend to not have mustaches anymore. I think that was like my father back in the day definitely had a mustache when he was a pilot, well, still is a pilot. And the clean cut image, I definitely see it. For me personally, I like having a little bit of facial hair on my days off, but I totally understand you know, the clean cut image. And reason number two is the oxygen mask. Let's say we're up at altitude and we have a rapid decompression in the cockpit, we have to don an oxygen mask. So to be able to do that and get the perfect seal, I guess they say, and the validity behind it is that you can't get a perfect seal from the O2 mask. So that's just a random fact, you know, to each his own. Uh, me personally, I wouldn't mind having a little bit of facial hair as long as you know it's very well groomed, but I also understand the clean cut image aspect of things. So fact number two is, for most people, they drive their car to their nine to five work, you know, go to the office every day, their, their commute is in their car, or maybe it's public transportation. But for a lot of airline pilots, they commute to a whole nother city to start work. So for me, back just three or four years ago, I was actually based up in Philadelphia while living here in Charlotte. And for me to start my work day, I actually had to drive to the airport in Charlotte, then take a flight from Charlotte to Philadelphia just to start my work day. So you can see how being a commuting pilot can definitely extend the length of your work day on the front and the back side of your trip. And you can end up having to leave a whole day earlier. Maybe a, a flight can't get you in to work to start that work day on time. So you have to leave the night before so that way you're in base ready to go. And that can happen on the back side of trips. So a lot of people were kind of blown away that a lot of pilots end up commuting on an airline to work. Now for a lot of airlines here in the United States, those tickets are free. So that's a big thing about being an airline pilot all across the world is most airlines give out flight benefits. So for you to be able to commute to work free, although yes, it adds a lot of time and it can add some stress and headache, but at least you're not paying for that ticket from Charlotte to Philadelphia. So that was a random fact that definitely stirred up the comments that people were like, what? Airline pilots pay for a ticket every single time they commute to work? So yeah, that's, that's a random fact. So fact number, three is a lot of pilots actually end up coming out of college with over six figures in debt. Now this isn't across all the boards, across all regionals, across all main lines, across just the airline industry and in whole. A lot of people choose to go to college that have flight programs. We call this part 141, which allows you to get a restricted ATP. Essentially you can get to the airlines about a year quicker, give or take a few months. If you go to these I guess 141 approved colleges. I ended up doing it. I got my private pilot outside of this 141 school and then I transferred to an aeronautical university 
got my ratings there, and it qualified me for a restricted ATP, which can be very, very, very expensive. Now, if you don't go to college and you just get your flight ratings outside of college, you can still spend about $75,000 getting all your ratings. That includes private instrument, commercial single, commercial multi, and then you have to build your flight time. So you could get all those ratings in 200 to 250 hours, but then if you don't go to approved 141 school, you have to build your flight time up to 1500 hours. So where are you gonna get that 1300 hours? There's so many different options. Pipeline patrol, you can be a skydive pilot, a banner tower, a flight instructor, but then that's more ratings you have to get, your CFI and CFII and CFMEI if you wanna be a multi-engine instructor. So the cost can definitely add up, but I've made videos in the past about how taking that risk, taking that jump, and taking out that loan or whatever it might be, in the long run, it, it pays for itself time after time after time because in the end, airline pilots do make a lot of money on the back end of their career as seniority grows and as time goes on in the company and you move on to bigger and better aircraft. Fact number four is a lot of pilots actually end up having flexibility in their schedule. Now I know a lot of people throw out, you know, can pilots really raise families? Are they gonna be around for their kids and whatnot? So for me, for my father, from personal experience and from my grandfather, seeing how he can move his schedule around for family vacations or whatnot, for my dad, if I had a baseball game, he was able to trade trips, drop trips, whatever it might be. Depending on coverage, it's pretty easy to move around trips and coverage meaning if there's other airline pilots to pick up those trips or if they have reserve pilots they can assign trips to. Each airline has different ways of trip trading and their coverage. So, you know, this is, this is kind of just a broad statement, but it's actually pretty easy to, to be able to, if you need a weekend off and you're assigned a trip, maybe a month in advance, to sit there and try and trade the trip, you know, two, three, four weeks in advance. So if you have a really important Maybe a wedding, you're in someone's wedding, you can always bid around that, but if for whatever reason you were given a trip on that weekend, a lot of the times, whether it's chief pilots that are willing to help you out, scheduling department, or just simply another pilot saying, hey, yeah, I'll trade you so you can be off that weekend, flexibility is actually pretty good as an airline pilot. And before we get into fact number five, I wanna give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, Skillshare. You guys know I've been working with Skillshare for over six months, and I wanna show you exactly why I love the platform Skillshare. Skillshare is an amazing online community with over a thousand different classes on so many different topics. I use Skillshare to personally build my own personal website. I found Gavin, which has over 10 lessons, almost 7,000 students, so many reviews, different discussion boards. If you guys want to take your hobby to the next level, check out Skillshare. And the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description actually get a free subscription. So check out Skillshare. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. So a huge shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. So random fact number five, I think I've been saying tips, but it's actually just facts. But here in the United States, we have to obtain a first class medical every year to be an airline pilot. And if you guys want to know the three different types of medicals and what all is involved and what you have to have certain medicals for here in the United States, leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to make a separate video on that. So for me, being 28 years old, I have to get a first class medical once a year. So I go to my air medical examiner, they do eyesight, they check your heart, they do a urine analysis. This is not a drug test, although we are prone to drug tests from the FAA at any point in time being an airline pilot but they're just checking iron levels, overall nutrients in your body, make sure you're hydrated. They check your ears, your eyes, you know, the whole shebang. It's basically just a, a normal physical. And for anyone over the age of 40 years old, like my father, he has to go every six months to get a medical exam to obtain that first class medical. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, the five random facts. If you guys like stuff like this, make sure to leave a comment down below. If you want more sit down aviation style videos, they're coming a lot more. I'm building something downstairs in my office and I'm really excited for what's to come on the aviation side of things. You know, aviation's a big part of my life. In fact, I got called for a trip about an hour ago, so I need to head to the airport. I'm dead heading up to Chicago and then working one flight from Chicago to Evansville. So if you guys wanna check out behind the scenes and stuff like that, you can follow my Instagram. It's at flywithgarrett. But until next time, hope you guys enjoyed it. Peace.